This video looks at the construct of script files in MATLAB and again is aimed at beginners. Previous videos then demonstrated how to use basic MATLAB functionality, so simple algebra, bodmass, vectors and matrices. For more advanced problem solving, there's often a requirement, and this is the key point, to repeat a sequence of computations and to generate plots. So rather than entering commands over and over again in the command window, which would be rather tedious, it would be easier if we could save a sequence of commands and run them all via a single instruction. So that would be a lot more efficient. And MATLAB supports this through script files. So first we need to know how do we create a script file. So what we do is we select the tab new script. So if you look here in the command window you'll see there's a, <coughs> there's a button there which says new script. When you do that you will end up with a blank window something like this. Now what I would say the first thing you do when you get this is you must give the file a name and select a folder to save it to. That is paramount so that you organize your work. You're creating a script file for a reason so put it in an allocated space and give it a sensible name. So I would advise you, advise you to set up a folder in advance and obviously have separate folders for different topics so that you can organize yourself. And just remember the default ending for MATLAB files is .m. You mustn't change this because this is how MATLAB knows it's a script file. It looks for the ending dot M. So using a script file, what we're going to do is say, OK, what if you want to open a file that already exists? Well, that's fairly straightforward. If you go to this file button and expose it, you'll see one of the options is open. So you just go there and open the file. Now, if you want to run the file, there are several ways you can do it. The most obvious way is with this big button here, which says run. And what that will do is it will first run line 6, and then it will run line 7, and then line 8, and then line 9, and then line 12, and so on. So it will run all the commands. You will notice, if you're not familiar with this, that anything preceded by a percentage is treated as a comment. So it's not actually executable code, it's comment so that you can put things in your file to make them more readable. But otherwise, when you press that run button, it will run each line and it will run them in turn. Now, the key advantage of a script file is what if you've got something wrong? Well, if you've got something wrong, all you need to do is edit the specific bit that you've got wrong and then just go back and press the run button again and it will run all the lines again. So it makes doing sequences of commands and correcting errors and updating things very, very efficient. And this will be obvious when we move to the live demonstration. So opening existing script files. Now this is a key point. You must always open from within the MATLAB environment. So underline that, open from within the MATLAB environment. Don't try and open them elsewhere. So first, open MATLAB. That's paramount. You must do that first. And then open script using the relevant tab within the MATLAB window. So you can see here there's an open button. You can open scripts in there. Or if the text editor window is already open, there's an equivalent button there. So the only way you should have open scripts is via those two buttons. Because if you do it any other way, it might look like it's worked but it won't have worked properly and you will get bugs. So useful facts with script files. The code is always executed in strict order of line numbers. So you have to make careful that you sequence your instructions carefully and will illustrate a typical bug that when happens when you haven't sequenced your code correctly. You can also run a script file by just typing its name in the command window and you'll find that in the long term that's actually very, very useful and the most common way of running files. But this works only if the file is visible. And again, we'll illustrate what we mean by visible and typical bugs that can happen.
So debugging. The other advantage of using script files is MATLAB will give you very useful hints when things are wrong so that you can correct your code. So incorrect sequences. You cannot use a variable before it has been defined. Hopefully that's obvious. So here's an example of a piece of code that will fail. You'll see the first command is clear. In other words, clear everything from the workspace. I want to make sure that my file is not corrupted by whatever exists already. But when I run this file, and you'll see I've run it by just typing its name in the command window, because that's one of the ways of running a file, but it's given me an error message. It says undefined function or variable x, and that's told me it's on line 5. So I go and I look at line 5. Here it is. And here's the problem. Line 5 is the first line to run. And at this point, x has not been defined. It does not exist. And that's what the MATLAB error message is telling me. You haven't defined x yet. And you'll see, where have I defined x? I've defined it on line 6. So if I want this code to run correctly, I've got to swap the order of lines 5 and 6. So I first define x and then use it. So this is an example where sequencing is really key. You must get the lines in the correct order. Now, here you can run a, a, a script file simply by typing the name in the command window. And this is an example. You can run it later. You'll see if you type the name in the command window, and this particular one produces a plot. And it just runs. And you'll find often that's the easiest way to run a script file. If you know the name, just type the name, and it will run. But is a key problem. It only works if the file is in the same folder as MATLAB is in. So at this point in time, this is the folder that MATLAB's in. And so you have to ask yourself, is the file in that folder? Now you can check your files using that current folder tab. And here's an example where things have gone wrong. So you see, I've typed the name of my file and I expect it to run. But MATLAB's come up with an error message, undefined function or variable. It doesn't understand this command. I've tried a different one, MATLAB Basics 4C. Same thing, undefined functional variable. MATLAB doesn't know whether this is a variable, whether it's a script file, what it is, but it can't find it. So it's giving me an error message. Now, if you look at the problem, you'll see I'm in the folder using MATLAB. But that's not on the folder. These files are actually in the subfolder MATLAB basics. So if I change MATLAB to the correct folder and then type my commands, they now run correctly. So this is an example. If you get errors like this, first thing to think about is, am I in the correct folder? Can MATLAB see my file? Now, as you remark here, more advanced users can create search paths, but I would advise against that for low-level basic users as it can create confusion. So finding bugs. Putting code in sequences and files and running a via file name is a good mechanism for locating bugs. So here you'll see I've tried to run the file MATLAB Basics 4D and it's told me you've got an error in line 14 of this code. And it's also told me what the error is. Vectors must be the same length. So it's given me a clue. Now, if I actually look at the particular vectors involved here, there they are, w, x, 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 y, and z, and you'll see what the problem is. The x and w are different lengths. You can see here, if I circle them in red, w has got 400 terms, and x has got 500 terms. So here, where I've tried to plot x against w, the command will fail because clearly those two terms have different lengths. But the key point here is that MATLAB has helped you find this error because it's given you a very useful hint. So further advantages. Once a script file exists, you can run it from within another script file just by typing the name. And here you can see where large efficiencies can start to build up because you can build a portfolio of useful files for common tasks. And to run those tasks, you just need to type the name of the file. So here's an example. You'll see what I've done is I've used this file to generate data. So I've just typed that name, 
and it's generated the data. And then the second file, the one I'm actually in, which is this basics 4 e is just doing plotting. So I run an existing file to generate data, and then the current file is just focused on making, making the plot look nice. So I'll run some live demonstrations now, and you will hopefully get the idea. Right, so that's the text editor window, and here's the command window. So we should have cleared that screen before we start. So if we start with MATLAB Basics 4A, here's a file. Now I could, if I was doing things in the command window, I could say, right, let's do that command, let's do that command, let's do that command, let's do that command. I could do the commands one at a time. Oops. What, I did something wrong there, did I? No. It's just, um, just a bit slow. OK, so I could do the commands one at a time. Now, if I discovered there was a bug, oh, there was a bug with Y, I could use the up arrow here and go, oh, let's find this Y. There it was, that's correct. It should have been 4 times X plus 1. Redo it. And now, oh, I've got to redo all my figure. So let's go back. And you go back and call your commands back. Redo that. Right, now where was the plot? Uh, redo that, and so on. And you can see the problem. It's going to be extremely tedious. However, if the file exists, and I say, oh, there was a bug, that Y was wrong, it should have been just a plus one here, then all I need to do is go plus one in the file and run it again. I was in the wrong folder. And there, job done. So you can see the advantage. I can make a change here. It wasn't plus one, it was plus 0 0.1. Run it again. Okay, so the advantage of having things in a file is that if it's simple edits, I just need to edit the one line, press run, and the whole file will be run. Okay, so that demonstrated 4A. Now, what about creating a new script? So if you want a new script, you can go to this file button here, and you'll see new script. So just click that and you'll see it's given me a new script. And remember the first thing I said was give it a name. So save it and what we could do is we could call this MATLAB Basics 4F because I haven't got one of those and now it's in the right folder, it's got the right name and I can start doing my commands. G equals 1 colon 20, H equals sign G, plot G comma H. So there's some commands I've entered, and now I can run this command, and my figure window is here, and you can see it's done it. And if I want to start editing this and saying, oh, it wasn't 1 to 20, it was 1, because that was a bit crude, colon point 0.2 to 20, so I've made that edit, and if you look at the curve at the moment, you'll see it's very crude, it's got lots of straight lines because I didn't have enough terms. Now I've put a lot more terms in. Let's run it again. And look, the curve looks much smoother. And you see immediately the advantage of script files for controlling your work and being very efficient. I can run that command if I want um, from here. So there it is. It's got its name. And I can run it from there. It's giving me lots of display to the screen, which I don't like. Put some semicolons in. Put some semicolons in. Go to File, save it, go back here, run it again, and look, no screen display. OK, what about being in the wrong folder? Well, at the moment, we're in this MATLAB Basics folder. So if I go back to the Using MATLAB folder, and then go Current folder, and you can see, look, there's no MATLAB files in here. So if I now try and run that command, what does it say? undefined function or variable doesn't exist or if I try one of the others like C doesn't exist if you look in the current folder doesn't exist I'm in the wrong folder so if I now go back to the MATLAB basics folder so you can see in the proper folder here look up current folder and what do you see there's all my M files down here MATLAB basics 4a 4b 4c 4d 4e 4f so now the files will run. So it's really important you put yourself in the right folder. And finally, if we go to something like MATLAB Basics 4E, and this was just to demonstrate that you can actually run other code within 
another script file. So this MATLAB Basics 4A is a script file and I'm running it from in MATLAB Basics 4E. So if I go here and type MATLAB Basics 4E, it will first run 4A and then does the plotting. And this one is doing nicer plotting. So you see the whole point of this was to say, look, I want a slightly nicer plot. So you can see what this one's done is focused on making the fonts a bit bigger, making the lines a bit thicker, just making it a bit prettier than the one that 4A was creating by itself. So a summary. We've demonstrated the usefulness of MATLAB for script files um, for executing sequences commands in an efficient manner. It allows complex computations to be tested, and that's the key point, to test it and save for easy use later. Once you know that those sequencer commands work and are correct, you can save them and they'll still be there in a year's time when you need them. So it allows efficient modification. If you want to change a function, say f of x, change a domain, change a color, change a title, you just have to change the little bit in the file, press run, and everything is updated. It allows you to create a portfolio of reusable scripts for regularly used tasks that we can call from other scripts. Now, this is an important remark. More advanced users will tend to use function files, not script files, because scripts work directly on variables in the workspace and thus can interfere with each other if used carelessly. But we're still at basic use. We'll move on to function files in a few videos' time once you've mastered the basics.